the Bible says, be not far from, from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. They gaped upon me with their mouths as ra 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 ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. That's sacrifice. Poured out. You hear Paul use the same, the same expression towards the end of his ministry when he said he was poured out like a drink offering, like a libation. And Jesus is saying that he, he was poured out. Now, all of the metaphors mentioned there are critical. Bulls, lions. You will soon see dogs, unbelievers. You will see bulls, wild animals, lions, talking about the Roman soldiers. You will see all the metaphors that was used to describe that situation of his sacrifice on the cross and all the elements of divine justice that were tied to his suffering. This was the price that he had to pay in order for the kingdom of God to become active upon the face of the earth. In verse 16, he says, For dogs have compassed me. Unbeliever. You know, he called, Jesus called a certain woman a dog, a Gentile. Far away. There were dogs there. So I'd like you to look through the metaphors and you'll be able to see the graphic picture that was in the narrative play out in prophetic language. David actually had very clear cut insight into this matter. Verse 18, can you still remember verse 18? He said, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Do you still remember that? That means Jesus was not doing what he did on the cross with clothes, like Passion of the Christ. He was stuck naked on the cross. And if you know anything about Hebrew culture, you will know that anyone that dies on a tree like, like Judas Iscariot, it was because there was a curse on him. That was why it was difficult for his disciples to believe that this was salvation because Jesus died like a cursed man. And all of that that was associated with his suffering on the cross was to generate spiritual currency. And this spiritual currency is so huge in the realm of the spirit and it can take, it can, it can, it's sufficient to ensure that any expression of the flesh whatsoever, the fallen man has found a stronghold and is maximizing it in your life. The spiritual currency around his suffering is sufficient payment so that when you come and expose it to the cross, the cross will release the sentence of death. That you are an imposter. You anger. You don't have authority. It means you have accepted that sentence. Huh? You are not with me. You don't know that there are some people that, that pamper their immorality. They protect their fornication. When someone comes out and says, he slept with me, they'll pay money and say, can you go back on air and, and say, say otherwise, that nothing happened. The person says, sorry, I was asleep. Oh. Nothing happened. No. They protect that infirmity instead of to expose it so that the cross can work on it. The cross can deflate that flesh that has become bogus. That's how transformation takes place. According to Psalms 22, there is adequate spiritual currency to deflate anything that is flesh. Now, stay, stay with me as we continue the reading. What was the implication of the cross? Because in the Gospels, when Jesus cried, 
my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There was no answer. But in the prophecy of David, there was an answer. So if you want to see the answer, I need to show you the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. In verse 25 of the book of Psalms, you will notice that the tone of the progression of divine revelation changes. It changes from suffering, from rejection. It changes from affliction, from pain. It changes from tears, from cries without comfort. And it changes into praise. And that's why if you get any commentary of the Bible, it is very difficult. The theologians found it so difficult. I mean, the early theologians found it so difficult to interpret the book of Psalms 22 because of the sharp contrast therein. The first aspect had to do with the price that Jesus paid on the cross, and the second aspect had to do with the government that it produced. And if you don't understand the context, you might miss the message. What does it say in 25? Is it 25? 25. It says, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. Next verse. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. The kingdom. 27. He said, all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. This is the, supposed to be the implication of the cross. Do you still remember John chapter 12? He said, now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world is cast out. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all nations unto me. So if I be crucified, if I be lifted up on that cross, the implication is that the government of God will become effective upon the face of the earth. And when the government of God becomes effective upon the face of the earth, I will draw men. My throne is going to be established upon their hearts. And I will constrain them through the love that I shed upon their hearts by the Holy Ghost. We are running this race because we love him. If you like, come and put a gun on my head. I know where I'm going. I will die gallant. Because you know what? He loves me. The least I can do is to love him in return. And that's the reason why sacrifice is not something that is sacrificed to us. It's a privilege to serve his will. All nations, he said, will come. That is the result of that which he was doing on the cross. A government will come into the earth. He said, and all kindreds, of all nations shall worship before thee. Yes, go on. For the kingdom is the Lord's. So if we are talking about the cross and we separate it from the kingdom, we have not seen through the lenses of the word of God adequately. It is when God has brought the sentence of the cross on the old creation, then he begins to raise a new creation in which the Christ will be the governor. So the cross is the gateway to the establishment of the government of God. And that's why Paul says, I'm not going to get stuck in using rhetoric to talk about these things, lest I obscure the cross. And we have a Christianity that is a party for old creation people. Do you understand that? People still basking and boasting in, in, in the manifestations that are found in Adam. And the fullness of the expectation of God, which is that God wants a new creation, will not find expression because we have taken out the cross, which is the instrument of transformation. It is because Jesus paid, that is why he will not accept that anger. It is because Jesus paid, that is why he will not accept that fornication. There is sufficient provision 
for you to be delivered because God want, what God wants, his expectation after resurrection is that every believer in him should walk in the newness of life. New, everything new. Everything what? So instead of being a liar, I become a preacher of truth. It's new. It's so new that my mother heard me preach and my mother said, my son. Because she never thought that that liar could become. <laughs> she was amazed. How did you become this? Because you didn't teach me what I am now. I'm new. In fact, the areas that you call your weaknesses, there is something about your ministry that is tied to that area. A liar becomes a preacher of the gospel. Not just a normal preacher. An upholder of truth. A preacher of verity. An establisher of doctrine. That's impossible. But transformation owes its merits to the cross. It is through that instrument that new creations can adequately find expression. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So, having established this, don't ever forget Psalms 22 verse 28. For all the kingdom is the Lord's. From the cross, we we'll begin to talk about the kingdom. And he is the governor among the nations. So, Jesus is enthroned in the new creation as the governor. But, he will not govern the old creation. Do you understand that? And that's why everything of the old creation is not under his government. It will need to be subject to death. And God, by a different life, will animate you. So even though you still have the same body, you are not the same person. What make, gives you life now is the life of God. And every aspect of your life is supposed to be a projection of that image of Christ which God, God expects you to manifest. And any obstruction to that clear, distinct manifestation of the image of Christ, which is an aspect of weakness that the flesh has yet colonized and Adam is manifesting, if you bring it to the cross, it will still receive that verdict. And there will be a replacement of that manifestation with a resurrected equivalent. In the place of anger and rage, there will be compassion and mercy. Such transformation that is not capable by gradual adjustment. Such transformation that is a function of the Spirit of God. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Now, having gotten to this point, I cannot show you what exactly is the iniquity of the sanctuary. On Calvary tree, Jesus suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves me. I cannot say why He lost me I cannot say why I On Calvary tree He suffered for me He lost me I cannot say why. So that's our closing song But we are not closing now Let's be sure you know this song. I cannot say why. He loves me. I cannot say why. I uncovered retreat. He suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot. It was in the village that God showed me 
that he, he said, you, you will be my messenger to the nations. It was an abomination to think about that then. Today we have suits to wear. <laughs> oh my God. I will serve Jesus. Never lie to me. Never. 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 There were, there were dangers I entered. The reason why I entered was because he said, there's no danger there. And when I entered, there was no danger. I learned how to walk in his perception. If, if what you have as your instrument of sight is the only sight you have, you are blind. Lost me, I cannot fail. All right, let's do a reading quickly. I've given you doctrine. Now let's go back to ministry. The iniquity of the sanctuary. Um, Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. This is a chronicle about a king called Uzziah. King Uzziah was one of the icon kings of Israel. He was one of those kings that gave Israel the reputation of being a world power. When the history of the nation of Israel is recalled, the mighty feats of Uzziah can never be forgotten. He was such a mighty man. The hand of God was upon him. The, the ingenuity that began to find expression in his reign was almost second to none. Let me show you a few. 15 of 2 Chronicles 26. I'm starting from 15 because of time. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with our engines. The military might of Israel prospered because of this man. They were cunning scientists. That were raised in his time. They made engines. Engines that stood on the fences. And from there, arrows were launched. They, they, they will end the, arrow, the battle even before you get close to the gate. The engine. And his name spread far abroad. For he was marvelously helped. Till he was strong. Somebody say marvelously helped. He was marvelous. You see, when you pray for ministry, can you ask God for this? Help me marvelously. He was marvelously helped until he became strong. So if, a man, if God wants to make a man strong, what, what, what does he do? He, he helps him marvelously. Till he became strong. There was nothing round about him that he did not conquer. He was marvelously held. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord, his God. And went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. The iniquity of the sanctuary. He decided to trespass, to transgress. 
the ordination that was upon him was the ordination of a king. When his heart became lifted up, he saw himself as the omnipotent. Then he now asked himself, this priest, what are they even doing? What's, what's their work? So what stops me now from offering a sacrifice to God? <laughs> so he came into the temple and went to the altar of incense. And began to burn incense. And Azariah the priest went after him, and with him, four score priests, four score, that's 80, 80 priests of the Lord that were valiant men, and they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto the Lord. But to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary. I mean, 80 men are the ones trying to resist this man. One man, but 80 men. Not 80 small priests. Didn't, the priests that came to resist him were valiant. That was how strong his flesh was. That 80 men could not resist him. He was bent on doing what he wanted to do and he did it in the sanctuary. I'm just showing you what happens when a man is using flesh in the temple. <laughs> hey! God will try to restrain you. There will be many signs that will come to restrain you. Huh? But, the, you see, there are times where you need to leave the pulpit for one year. A man sees struggling with immorality, we sleep here, he go to Mexico. He will go to Uganda. He will forget himself on two ladies. You know what? Leave the sanctuary. Leave the sanctuary. There is a possibility that a man behind the pulpit can trivialize the sanctity of ministry. And you become a mafia. Walking with Antichrist demonic principles. And because you don't fall down and die the first day, you think God is not powerful enough. Meanwhile, the reason for God's long suffering is so that we can repent. And people get used to doing fleshly things in the sanctuary, even though there are deliberate attempts to resist. The man withstood 80 men. It was in the midst of the temple while he was trying to burn incense that God struck him with leprosy. The iniquity of the sanctuary is what made God come into his temple to purge. It's what makes God come into his temple to judge. It's what makes God come into his house to kill. God did not design his house as a place of death. His house is supposed to be a place of life. But God comes down to bring judgment when people have refused to be restrained in the use of the flesh. The sanctuary is not a place for flesh. The ministry is not a place for flesh. This guy was struck with leprosy. And you know, God is so, God is so patient. And people have taken his patience to mean he's weak. Eighty men came to restrain this man. He insisted on his ways. When God saw that, he refused to respond to the restraint. He struck him. How many of you still remember Uza? Uza's case is also a very credible account of the iniquity of the sanctuary. There was a fundamental error because the ark was being transported on Israeli ground 
with Philistine technology, they put the ark in a new cart. And they were transporting the ark. Scribes among them knew that this was not the means of transport for the ark. But everybody was singing praises to God. In the midst of an outright violation of the divine order. And then the ark now stormed. And Uzzah, which means human strength, the strength of the fallen man, the strength of the old creation, was now extended to stabilize the ark. Are you trying to stabilize the ark with falling strength? Your days are numbered. They are trying to support the ark. There is a violation already. And maybe if he had allowed the ark to stumble, they would have realized, hey! It was supposed to be transported. So God was not unaware of the stumbling ark. Maybe if the ark had fallen, they would have realized that something was wrong with the transportation. In order for them to continue in the error, a man stretched the hand of the old creation to support God's work. What happened to him? He became a victim of the iniquity of the sanctuary. The Bible says, seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved, Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably in reverence and in godly fear. Acceptable service is born out of reverence for God. Acceptable service is born out of the fear of God. I've seen so many people that are casual in ministry. So casual. Even the way we raise money. Huh? We went to Ghana. And you know Ghana is very costly when it comes to real estate. To rent a hall in Ghana, in Ghana is some money. The Nigerian equivalent, the Naira equivalent of what it took to rent the hall we used for four days for one day was 1.3 million. So we're paying 1.3 million every day for the hall we use for four days. How much is that? Help me. What? 5.2 million. So we paid 5.2 million for that auditorium. The auditorium has 4,000 capacity. It was 1.3 per night. The guys that... Um, Came up, came with their cameras. We rented cameras. It was 12,000 CDs. That's uh, how much? Add two zeros. What do you have? 1.2 million. So add it to 5.2. Six point something. Okay, we, we, we made t shirts. They didn't tell me the cost of the t shirts. We made all kinds of stuff. So by the time we came to Ghana, our team was owing $9,000. And you know, our pastor in Ghana is a man of faith. He believes everything is possible. I say, oh, God, come, oh, God, come. come. <laughs> we're in trouble. Oh, God, we're in trouble. He said, the Lord, we're... we're in trouble. I had to go to God and say, God, we're owing money Will you allow me to take offering? He said, you may take offering if you will make a contribution. You know it's possible for somebody to be raising money and he's not giving. I said, yes, I have $2,000. It's okay. Before you take the offering, pay your own first. Then you can announce it. Don't say, you come and give $2,000. You, no, just announce it and go and sleep. It's my own job to convince the people to give. 
You know that's a risk if what you are looking for is 9,000 US dollars. Not in US, in Ghana. So I told them, we didn't come here to raise money. I'm very sorry. We have a problem. This is my own 2,000 US dollars. We need 9,000. And that was all. We didn't talk about that. Do you know how much we got? We got 9,500. So we were able to pay and just for God to show us that he's more than 9,000, he added. <laughs> Don't get used to raising money. I had to go to him to ask him first. Lest. They, because maybe if I had come and then we start raising money without asking him, it will work. People will still give money. But what you are doing there is the iniquity of the sanctuary. You are operating in his sanctuary without his express power. You are doing something strange. What you are doing is strange. Heaven will be looking at it. What is what's happening here? That's what happens when we allow the old creation to ferment. It will enter into ministry and it will begin to do something. That God will need to catch our attention by killing somebody. Oh, the moment the fear of God is gone, you are gone. You become familiar with God, you start touching people's breasts. That's why a pastor, a married woman came for cancer and he slapped her on the butt and said, Die. There is something you are giving your husband that you are not giving me. I am a Korea Siakonde. You have forgotten that in the sanctuary the laws are different. And so we have all kinds of crazy things happening. And the reason why God will judge the church in Nigeria is because the iniquity of the sanctuary has, has been taking place for long. People are used to it. I've seen situations where a pastor sent people to a congregation where he was coming to preach in two weeks' time. They mingled with the guys, getting information. This one, his name is Boniface. He works in NMPC. His number is 080, this, this. And the minister came and was cramming number. 08446. That's what. That's what that's supposed to be word of knowledge. Then he came and said, Boniface, Boniface, Boniface. I'm hearing Boniface. Okay. Whenever you hear that a minister died on the pulpit, don't don't con, don't send condolence message quickly. If not, you'll be a partaker of the iniquity. You and your wife thought you are going to preach. Just go back and say, be afraid of God. Be afraid. He said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. This is just the number one item of the iniquity of the sanctuary. That's just one out of four. Many men will yet die preaching the gospel in Nigeria. Because the era of judgment has begun. God was, is out to port his church so that he can have a remnant that will bring witness to him in the earth. And so spiritual authority is a dangerous occupation. That was why David, even though he had the opportunity to kill Saul, he refused. Because he knows that it is God that has the exclusive right to judge an anointing. Do you understand that? If I see a man living in sin, I will say, 
Sin is wrong. But ultimately, it is God that will judge that man. I will run away from him. If I had any form of association with, with him, I haven't told him that there is a matter and he ignores it. I mean, I will escape. So that, because in the day that God comes to judge, if you are around, he will strike you too. I want to pray for the church in Nigeria. So much has happened. So much has happened. If I tell you how many people, how many ladies have come to me for counseling who, who have been brutalized by ministers of the gospel, you will never know them because the Lord has transformed them. And even my wife, I will not tell her. Because that's the burden of our calling. There are secrets you will keep to the grave. You will know that something is wrong with ministry in our time. 80 priests that were valiant could not resist the man's flesh. Can we ask that God let me never get to that point where you will need to come and strike me. May my heart be ever tender. What's that our song again? Yes, that's the song. Before we pray. Jesus suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say. You need to fear him. On Calvary tree, he suffered for me. He lost me. I cannot say why. He lost me. I cannot say why. He lost me. I cannot say what uh -huh. on Calvary tree he suffered for me. He lost me. I cannot say. If you are here in this auditorium, you were given one responsibility or the other to do in the kingdom. And because of the honor that is attached to the hallowed office of the ministry, the hallowed place of the anointed, you had so much influence. And part of what you used the influence to do was to defile a sister. If you are here and you want to be free, this is the Lord, though. This is the Lord. This is not me. Just in case you want to be free, I want to invite you to come and repent here. You have from count of one to the count of eight. At least I'm doing this to obey God. And at the count of eight, don't bother. God is coming into his sanctuary. And a lot of casualties will find expression because the fear of the Lord is absent. He loves me. I cannot say why. On Calvary tree, He suffered for me. He loves me. I cannot say. If you are listening online and you know you are also involved in this challenge as we pray, set your heart in repentance. 
Are you here, a young lady, you know that someone is a pastor and you have been servicing that pastor. We are waiting for you. I cannot say And on Calvary Tree He suffered for me He lost I cannot see. There are two ladies I'm waiting for. There are two ladies I'm waiting for. He loves me. If you are ashamed, then you don't know the kingdom. This is an act of mercy. Not a setup. If I don't have instruction from the Lord, I won't do this. He loves me. I cannot say. He loves me. I cannot say. He loves me. I cannot say why. Ah, on Calvary, Jesus he suffered for me. He lost me. I cannot say why. You have to the count of eight to respond. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven. congregation there let it be known that I gave you the opportunity I give you an additional three seconds to make up your mind on Calvary tree he suffered for me he lost me I cannot say those of you in front, can you just ask him for mercy? Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. He will stretch forth his hands. He will restore you. So that you can serve him in spirit and in truth. Lord, look upon my brothers, my sisters with mercy. Look upon my brothers, look upon my sisters with mercy. We ask that you forgive. We ask that you break this weakness, deflate this weakness and let your spirit manifest his strength in the area of this weakness in the name of Jesus. Roll away the heavy burdens that they had to battle with all this while. And let this error be blotted out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You may go back to your seat. Don't run away from ministry because of what happened. He will still strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Can we pray just one prayer point? Just one prayer point. There's, there's judgment. There's judgment in the church in Nigeria. There's judgment. First of all, it is 
only wise for us to ask that, Lord, spare me. Can we pray that prayer? In the day where God is willing to judge, he said, who can abide in the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appears? For he shall be like a refiner's fire. Father, spare me. As you pass through the landscape, as you put your mark of compliance upon your people, have mercy on me. 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 Have mercy. 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 Have mercy on me. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Second and last prayer point before we take our offering. Can you tell God to make you uncomfortable anytime you err? It is a blessing. Of make me take my peace from me. Let it be so intense that I will have no choice but to stand back and deal with the error that you are pointing to. Give God the right of way. Let it be so intense. Take my peace. Take my peace. I want to be in alignment with you every day. Every day. If you have a problem with my speech, take my peace away. So that it will be easy for me to find alignment. To find alignment. Help me. Help me on the journey. Help me on the journey. Help me on the journey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Make it easy for me to know that I've transgressed. So that I can stand back. I can know there's an emergency. There is something that breaks your heart so much. Let me not become too strong like Uzziah. That I no longer care about what bothers you. Help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Aso se lamina la brasketo. Mesco brege dalisco masu ala hanteli. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. This is our prayer, Lord. That anytime we walk out of line, let your spirit register the emergency so intense upon our hearts. Amen. So that it will be easy for us to repent. Yeah. Shine the light on the darkness that seeks to take hold of our soul. Yeah. Until we stop. And open that place to you for you to conduct a surgery. We are willing to walk with you. In Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Ushers, let the offering baskets go around. I want to drop two announcements with us quickly. Because the evening service tomorrow is an impartation service. And the Holy Ghost will come down. So mightily. Because you need to be empowered to go back to that place from whence you have come. So that you can do the will of God. 
So first of all, we are having an impartation service in the evening. It's an impartation and a healing service. And then tomorrow morning, we don't do morning services, but tomorrow we are going to do. We are going to start at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Um, all the child dedications will take place in tomorrow morning service. It's a prophetic service. It's, it's, it's for prophecy. We're trying to understand through the compass of prophecy where God is taking the church in this season. Hallelujah. Yes, there's a possibility that you might get a personal prophecy and all of that. But it's more about the direction where God is headed for the church in Africa. So that is going to be spelled out quite clearly in the morning service. And then in the evening service, it will be an impartation and a healing service. So we'll begin in the morning by 8.30. Now, please get it clearly. We don't intend to begin a local assembly. How, how, how old are we now? We are 14 years old. So if the direction was to start a local assembly, it would have started since. So don't be afraid of my mentioning Sunday. Right? If you come next Sunday, you won't see us. <laughs> but this is important. We need to two aspects of the meeting that must um, come into view is prophetic direction for the church on the continent and also an impartation so that you go back and part uh, to where you came from. Hallelujah. So we'll do the impartation in the evening, then we'll do the prophetic service in the morning. Um, ushers, are you done with the offering? If you have given your own offering, you may wish to stand as we bring the service to a close. 8.30 a.m. we will be here. And those that are dedicating their children, please come earlier. It's, okay, they should see all the people dedicating their children. Please see Pastor Tony, the resident pastor. He will advise accordingly. Now, those of us that came from other nations people that came from other nations your impartation will be tomorrow morning and then the rest of us it will be in the evening so please try to come early not just when the message will go on but when the prayers will start it will start by 8 30 and it's for one hour the prayers are for one hour so that we can gain mileage and we can be adequately angulated to the hills from whence come at our help. 8.30 tomorrow morning. Uh, where is um, Ajuma? So you are going to take the praise and worship. So make sure you are part of the prayer. Hallelujah. Can we give him praise as we bring this service to a close? I hope. Is that all? Okay, please. Hallelujah. Also, just to let us quickly know that we, the Adulam registration has been extended for just two days, Monday and Tuesday. So if you have not gotten yourself registered yet, quickly go to adulam.ng. Adulam.ng. We have just two days extension of the registration for the last session for this year, 2020 to Tuesday next week. All right. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you came from out of town today and you need accommodation, please, you do well to move to the 